Okay, everybody, Mr. Shua coming at you one last time here with Down to the Wire, questions 41 to 50. Let's just jump right in it. Click on a box to choose each ordered pair you want to select. You must select all correct pairs. That's the thing about the XOL. If you don't select all the correct answers, you get the question wrong. So make sure you select all. So let's see. Identify each x and y intercepts of the function h of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. Why don't we just uh, plug it in and see what's happening here. All right. So if I go x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. Graph that. And, hmm, there's an intersect here. I'm going to expand my window just a little bit with the y's. I'm going to make that a negative 20 just so I can expand and see everything. So it looks like I have an intercept here, 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 and here. Well, that looks like 1, 2, 0, which is what I circled here. This looks like a negative 3, 0, which is what I circled. And then negative 2, 0, which I circled here. And then come down to negative 12, 0, negative 12, which is what I circled here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then if you just want to double check those zeros, of course, all you'd have to do is second trace 0 and then go for each one. Well, see, 0, negative 12. Then you just go for each of those, and then you'd find all four. Remember, you have to do all four. In this case, there are four. One, two, three, four, in order to get this answer correct. Selecting only two or three of them, you'll get it incorrect. All right, let's move on to 42. All right. Which of the following describes the end behavior of y equals negative x squared plus bx plus c as x approaches either positive or negative infinity? Well, the easiest way to do this, graph on your calculator y equals negative x squared to see what it looks like. So if I go here, I clear this out, y equals negative x squared because it doesn't matter what else comes after that, minus 4x plus 3x or whatever, the negative x squared is basically going to give you the shape of the graph. And let's graph that. y equals negative x squared. All right, so that's y equals negative x squared. So it looks like as x goes towards positive infinity, y goes towards negative infinity. As x goes towards negative infinity, y also goes towards negative infinity. Let's look at our answer choices. Y approaches positive infinity? No. Y approaches negative infinity? Yes. Y approaches C? No. The C and D don't make any sense. Y approaches negative infinity on both sides. So that's our answer choice, B. All right. Let's go on. Question 43. If f of x equals 2 thirds x squared plus 1, and g of x equals 6x minus 15, which polynomial is equivalent to g of f of x, which is composition of functions? So you need to be familiar with composition of functions in order to get it. I worked it out by hand here. f of x equals 2 thirds x squared plus 1. g of x is 6x minus 15. g f of x, which means that we're going to plug in f of x into g of x. So that means 6, and wherever we see an x, we're going to plug this in, 2 thirds x squared plus 1 minus 15. Again, we're plugging the f of x into the g. Now we distribute. 6 times 2 thirds is 12 thirds, which is 4. So that's 4x four squared. 6 times 1 is 6. So we get 4x squared plus 6 
minus to six minus to fifteen. So uh, positive six minus fifteen is negative nine. Four x squared minus nine, which is choice B. Okay. Again, practice up on your composition of functions if you're not sure of how I went through this, or just watch this again. Okay. Question forty-four. Fo fo. The domain of the function is x plus three over x squared plus 5x minus 24 is all real numbers except, now the domain is all real numbers except where it makes the denominator equal zero. So we need to find the two numbers that would make the denominator zero. Now, x squared plus 5x minus 24, if we factor that, that factors to two binomials, finding two numbers that add to positive five and multiply to negative 24. Well, that would be positive eight and negative three. So x plus eight times x minus three equals zero. Because I went through the factors of 24 and the only factors of 24 that give me a positive five are the eight and the three. So now we have x plus eight equals zero, x minus three equals zero. Here, our answer is gonna be positive three. Here, our answer is gonna be a negative eight. And the only answer that fits is choice B. Okay, after we break it down. So the domain is all real numbers except for negative 8 and 3, because if you plug in negative 8 and positive 3, it makes the denominator 0 and it's not defined. Okay, question 45. The amount of work W done when lifting an object varies jointly, varies jointly with the mass of the object M and the distance of the object, the distance the object is lifted, D, which equation models the relationship. Now you have to remember what the formula for joint variation is. Formula for joint variation is basically Y equals KXZ, or two numbers here. In this case, the Y is gonna be our W, our work is equal to K, our constant, times the mass and the distance the object is lifted. So W equals KMD. That's the only one that works. This, these are inverses. Everything else here are inverse variations. Because remember, direct variation is Y equals KX. Inverse variation is Y equals K over X. All of these are inverses. This is the only one which is joint variation, joint C. Choice C, okay. Question 46. Oh, we're moving right through this. Madison deposited $1,000 into a savings account that compounds interest yearly. After her initial deposit, Madison did not withdraw or deposit any money from the account, from this account. The table below shows the amount in her savings account over a period of years. So this is how much money she's clocking them dollars here. Okay. Now, using the exponential curve of best fit, which is closest to the expected amount in the savings account 30 years after the time Madison deposited the initial $1,000. Hopefully your teachers have shown you how to do this. I know some teachers have, some teachers haven't, but in case your teacher hasn't shown you how to do this, this is how you would do it. The question is saying using the exponential curve of best fit. So, what we would do, we're going to use exponential regression. But first thing we need to plug in is our data. So we go to stat, edit. I want to clear out what I have in here previously. Clear that out. Clear this out. Okay, now our L1, our X values, 2, 4, 6, eight, 10. Okay. Our Y values, 11, 
1593.85 and 1790.85. Now, on an exponential regression curve, these are just basically points on the exponential regression curve. Then we're going to be looking for another point when it's at point 30. First, we need to get the exponential regression curve. Once we have that formula, then we'll plug it in for 30 years, and then we'll see how much money we have. Okay, so I've got the money in. Now, I've got my data. So I go to stat, calc, and it's going to be option zero for exponential regression because it says using the exponential curve of best fit. Exponential regression. My L1 and L2 are what I have. Now, at storage EQ, this is important. At storage, don't go out and calculate just yet. At storage EQ, I want you to hit the VARS key, right arrow over to Y VARS, one for function, one for function. Now, you see a Y1 there. What that means is once you have that particular function, it'll store it in Y1 in case you want to graph it. You won't have to write it down. It'll already be stored in the calculator. Now let's go ahead and calculate. So what we get is Y equals 1,000 plus 1.06 to the x power for exponential. And our r squared, our correlation coefficient is 1, which means it's dead on. So this is our exponential regression curve of best fit formula. So now we know what the numbers are at year 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Let's find out what it is at year 30. So let me clear this out here. What I will do, I want to bring up my y1. I will go to vars. Y vars function one, Y one, that's what I want. I want to find out what this formula is at year 30. Open parentheses, 30, close parentheses, enter. Tells me $5,743, choice C. Now again, I encourage you to watch that again, especially if your teacher hasn't shown you how to do this. Okay, so exponential curve of best fit, 5743, that's our answer. Okay, let's move on. Question 47. Which graph best represent a function with zeros of negative 2, negative 1, and 2? Well, we're looking for 1, 2, 3 zeros. That has two zeros, so nope. That has two zeros, so nope. And then negative 2, negative 1. This has negative 2, positive 1, 2. So that don't actually, no. B doesn't work either. So the only one with negative 2, negative 1, positive 2 is choice D. Well, that's a novel. You can just look at that one. There's not much to figure out with that one. All right, let's move on. Question 48. The number of permutations of eight objects taken three at a time. Well, we just used a permutation for its eight permutation three. Doing this on calculator, let me clear this. I would type the number eight. I would hit math. And then I would go over to probability. And I want a permutation, which is option two. Two, three. So it's eight objects taken three at a time with a permutation. 336, option D. Okay. Let's move on. Nothing else I really need to do there. All right. Here, inverse variation. If y varies inversely as the square root of x, what is the constant of proportionality if y is 16 when x is 4? Well, first of all, inverse variation, the formula is y equals k over x. But in this case, it says it varies inversely with the square root of x. So it'll be y equals k over the square root of x. Then it says, if y is 16, replace y with 16, x is 4 squared. So we have 16 equals k over the square root of 4. 
which is just 2, 16k over 2. And then to find out k, I multiply both sides by 2, 32. It's actually rather simple when you know the inverse formula. Okay, choice C, 32. And the last question, question 50. Okay, which of the following describes the root of the equation when 9x squared equals 6x minus 1? Well, set it equal to 0 so that you're going to subtract 6x. You're going to add 1. You'll get 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. Then you use the discriminant. And if you remember, the discriminant is just the part under the, under the radical sign of the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac. This is my a, this is my b, this is my c. So b squared, so negative 6 squared minus 4 times a of 9 times 1 of c. So negative 6 squared is 36. Negative 4 times 9 is negative 36, 136. 36 minus 36 is 0. Now, if you remember from dis the laws of discriminants, if your discriminant equals 0, it means there's only one real root. If your number is a positive number, you'd have two distinct real roots. And if your number is a negative number, you'd have two distinct imaginary roots. But since our number is zero, it's exactly one real root. Okay, so that's all 50 questions of the Algebra 2 2014 SOL. Now, if any of these aren't familiar to you or you need a little bit of help, please go back, watch these videos again here. And I also want to say, I've only shown you one way how to answer these questions. Your teachers may have shown you another way. As long as you get the answer, that's what counts. You don't have to use one particular way. There's always more than one way to solve a math problem. Okay, this is Mr. Shua signing off. See you guys later.